All right, so I want to talk about something I noticed on infill just now. Um, so the difference between grid, so if you look at the types of infill here, we have grid and we have rectilinear, and they're both on diamond pattern. And so I said to myself, why are there two different uh, patterns with the same pattern? And so I thought about it a little bit, the different ways that they could be different. One hint is that the grid is bigger than the rectilinear, the diamond shapes. And when you consider that you're defining it by infill density, um, then it implies exactly the reason that it's shown half the size. So the grid, as we see here, if I grab the uh, slider here, the grid is doing the lines in all the directions, in both directions, I should say, right? Whereas if I go to... Um, <coughs> If I go to rectilinear, and then I slice it, so now, and you can see it's alternating uh, from layer to layer. So if I go to one layer, so this this layer is only doing the horizontal lines here, and if I go up to the next layer, then this this one is only doing the vertical lines here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's. I'm not. Oh, there must be somewhere else. But anyway, so you can see that it's alternating layers, so that's what makes it different. Um, yeah, so I <laughs> I went to print and it was going to take like seven hours, and I said, "Why is it going to take seven hours? It should be like a couple hours of that." <clears throat> and I looked and I realized I accidentally had four shells instead of two, and so I changed that, and then I was going to mess with the infill, and it's just saving me about fifteen minutes if I go from fifteen to five here. Um, Oh, I did want to show one last thing about infill was the gyroid infill. If you're not familiar with gyroid infill, I think gyroid actually makes for a more durable part. I think it makes for a little bit more of a flexible part. I'll oh, put that back to 15% so you can see it. <coughs> uh, slice. Uh, I think the gyroid makes a more durable part, not necessarily a stiffer part, actually the opposite of a stiffer part because it's all a bunch of curves then that sort of allows the whole thing to flex a little bit and so like bend instead of break type of deal and uh, so that's why typically I use gyroid but in this case there's like no structural need to this part and so I'm going to do the uh, although I, I do want I don't want to do rectilinear because I just want the top to look nice and I'm gonna go uh, less dense infill so i'm going to go grid just so this the the supports are fully supported underneath and that way when i go to five percent here and the, what did i just what did i just do uh, oh i clicked the up there okay good uh so when i go to five percent here and i slice so no, ooh, i don't like that it didn't give me that line I'm going to go to 6. I want that other line. Uh, not so important on this portion, but on this top portion, I want it to be nice and flat. And so if I... Oh, I didn't re-slice. Um, yeah, actually, I don't even care about that in there, but... Ah, interesting. Uh, so down here... I just figure if it, if it was the, um, the the rectilinear, each filament can sag a little bit more than this uh, grid is my thought. And so for this case, I'm going to use grid. So anyway, thanks for watching.